first visit to the Blavatnik School of Government. My late father spent a good deal of his life as a milk delivery roundsman. Um, this is in the old days in Britain when every household, or almost every household, had milk delivered to their door every morning. You, and those of you of younger years won't remember this. And some of my earliest memories are of my dad getting up in the small hours of the morning to get the first tram, to get to the dairy, to start delivering the milk uh, to the customers. So the concept of delivery was born into me from <laughs> a very early age. Um, and a little bit later, when I was old enough to understand these things, um, I talked to my father about what he'd done during World War II when he'd been conscripted into the logistic corps um, and that's the bit of the of the army operation that moves people things and per and, and materiel from one part of the earth's surface to another um, and in every military that I know of the logistics core right down at the bottom of the pecking order and the lowest so social status uh, of all and yet what they do is essential <coughs> uh, to meeting the battle plans and when they get it wrong as in Michael's example from Russia or in the Battle of Arnhem everything goes pear-shaped so again that taught me about the, the, the importance of getting details of implementation and the catastrophic failures that follow when they aren't right. <laughs> when I went to university quite a lot later, um, I was taught by a man called Andrew Dunsire, who's still alive at 91. Here's one of his books called Implementation in a Bureaucracy. Um, and that's part of a, a long literature on how to deliver policies by government. Um, uh, one, just a, an example of a much larger kind of literature, um, and I could say more about that, but let me just concentrate on what Dunsire taught me. He was, maybe is for all I know, he's still alive, um, a member of the Society of control engineers, that is cyan, uh, uh, cybernetics. And what he taught us about the organization of government took place from the background of control theory. Now, I'm going to give you a, a very quick overview of uh, the kind of perspective that is. A method of control viewed from this perspective is something, now listen carefully to this, is something that keeps the state of some system within some desired subset of all its possible states. Say that again. Keeps the state of the system within some desired subset of all its possible states. That is a definition of a control a method of control. If you can't do that, you don't have a method of control. And generally speaking, in order to be able to deliver that, you need three components. You need some means of identifying a goal, a target, or some desideratum. And in the control theory jargon that I was taught by Dunsire, that's called a director. You need, you need something that will do that. Secondly, you need some means of scanning the system to assess what state it's in out of all of its many possible states. That system is known in control theory jargon as the detector. And third, you, meet, you need some means of bringing the state of the system or changing the state of the system from a non-desired state to a desired state and that in the jargon of control theory is called the effector. Now unless you have those three elements uh, you cannot speak of a method of control. 
Now, and it's easy to identify these components in simple mechanical systems, for example, the heating system of this building, but when you get into social systems, it's very much more complicated and subtle. Now, turning to Michael and deliverology. Broadly speaking, if we look for the director in what the system Michael's talking about, um, the director um, comprises a source of political authority, like David Blunkett or Tony Blair in, in, in uh, Michael's UK work, or Nijab uh, uh, Ratsak in Malaysia, or Savas Sharif in uh, Punjab in Pakistan, some source of authority that's willing and able to commit um, and frame goals for the system over some period of time. Second, the detector in Michael's system consists of some system of reporting or other methods of data gathering that are capable of producing valid and reliable data uh, over some period of time um, so that you really know whether you're going forward or backwards. Um, and third, the effector consists of people like Michael. Um, who are acting with the sanction um, of the director to help persuade, cajole, or what have you, the units that are out of line um, to come into line. So that's, that's how deliverology fits into control theory and cybernetics. And that kind of approach that's, that's set out in Michael's book um, is broadly, from a control theory perspective, known as a homeostatic system um, because it couples some kind of definitive and relatively stable system of goals with continuous measurement <coughs> and negative feedback processes. Um, and that's the way your body's temperature system works. So you can find plenty of examples of that in nature. <coughs> And engineers tend to think of control like that. So typically do economists. And when you get economists and engineers working together, as happened in France in the 1950s with the issue of how to control the uh, public utilities, and particularly uh, Electricité de France at that time, you can get very elaborate systems of uh, reporting performance indicators and the like, as indeed did happen uh, at that time. Um, and I want to say straight away that um, homeostatic control systems fulfil those three elements of, of the requirements for the control for control that I set out uh, earlier. And uh, I can certainly accept that a homeostatic control system satisfies that. But I'd just like to make three, if I have time, points about it. The first is that these requirements that I set out for the deliver deliverology uh, approach are more demanding than they might seem at first sight. Take each of those three elements. First is a clear source of political authority that's able to commit itself to defined goals at least over some medium term. Um, and this outcome is, this, 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 this quality is more easily specified than it is satisfied. And, uh, and I think we should recognize them, that Tony Blair, particularly in the, the early part of his second term, was an exceptional, not a typical prime minister, um, in the amount, in, in his willingness and disposition to spend time and political capacity on this kind of thing, and was also able to do so in that time in his second term with a large and a stable majority. And <clears throat> indeed, the, the point at which Michael was working at the PMDU also took place at a particularly propitious time for that first part of the control theory process. It was exactly the delivery stage 
that had come after the early Blair's early Bambi period, as, it, as it's called, when you start moving into um, uh, delivering it's before Blair's tra reputation was trashed by the Iraq War. So it's a particularly very favourable window for this kind of activity to take place. Um, and it's quite hard to imagine how it could have continued into what some observers of the later years of New Labour have described as the era of drive-by shootings in the, <laughs> in the later part of that government. Second, if we take the, the second uh, desideratum, or second aspect of, 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 of uh, Michael's theory, and that is a, a reporting system that's capable of producing valid and reliable time series on performance data for every uh, relevant uh, unit. That's also quite demanding, and, and, and Michael points this out in, in, in his book. Um, it's often very hard to find uh, data from sources outside managers' uh, control or influence, and this is often very hard when data sources keep changing, and uh, I've spent four years working on uh, on running costs in government and getting a, a consistent time series on that is extremely demanding. Third element is a team led by the effector part. Uh, you need for the effector part a team led by someone uh, with a political savvy and self-effacing qualities of Michael uh, Barber um, uh, to manage the interventions. Um, but again, Michael Barber is exceptional, not typical, and whereas is much more common, you get blaming, bullying, um, and uh, uh, that, that kind of activity in the implementation stage, you end up with um, quite unpleasant and often counterproductive things happening. So there's this, 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 I would argue, is quite rare. These are very demanding conditions uh, to meet. Friedrich Nietzsche, the great German philosopher, um, once said that all theory is autobiography. And I think that this particular theory of, of Michael Barber's um, probably isn't an exception to that. And indeed, if I was trying to pitch this book to <coughs> uh, top uh, politi uh, political uh, actors, um, I would say, never mind the 57 rules, first find your Michael Barber, um, and then the whole lot follows on from there. Have I had my 10 minutes? Yes, you did. Okay, <laughs> I'll just, I just outline what I would have said under the other, <laughs> the other two points. I would have said, secondly, um, that um, partly because these conditions are so hard to satisfy, most of the time, most of the world's bureaucracies and public service systems are not controlled like this. And I would have told you how they are actually controlled. The third thing that I would have, uh, have said would have been to ask um, whether really deliverology um, is the way to make really big cuts in public spending. Um, and, and whether, if you're faced with um, the kind of problems um, <coughs> that come when you have to make deep cuts in public spending, deliverology is very much use to you. And, and I would have suggested that actually I think you move into a quite different kind of political logic at that point, where your choice really is between the surgery without anaesthetics approach on the one hand, or on the other hand, the, the, the business of, uh, of boiling a frog by heating up the water that it's in very, very, very slowly. And I think the choice is, when you have your face with really big cuts, come down to that. And I think it's a very different kind of political logic. Thank, Thank you. you.